Hello, I'm Dr. Sam, this is Dr. Sam's Health, and I continue covering the COVID-19 pandemic, sharing my opinions and uh, more or less educated guesses on what is happening right now. In my last video, I spoke about the real statistics of the pandemic, and I mentioned the study by Dr. Ioannidis, or Ioannidis, I hope I did not butcher his name. He pretty much advertised a study in the Santa Clara County, where they tested lots of people, and they have discovered that the actual prevalence rate or prevalence of the coronavirus is much, much higher than expected. And I made a commitment to talk about this study, so that is what I'm going to do today. Before we begin, I have to make two disclaimers. The first one is related to my professional standing. I'm a practicing physician, I belong to a professional body, but this video is purely educational. Nothing that I say is intended to be a medical advice, and the opinions that I express in my videos are solely my own opinions. They have nothing to do with the opinions or statements of my professional body. And the second disclaimer is related to the content of this particular video. I'm going to talk about this Santa Clara study, and effectively I'm going to criticize it. I don't want anybody, especially Dr. Ioannidis, to perceive it as some sort of a personal attack. I just truly believe that whatever we say has certain consequences and we have to provide the people around us with properly communicated information. We should not strive for any kind of sensationalism. We should look for the truth and that is the main reason why I'm going to critically appraise this study. Now when we are done with the disclaimers, I can get to the actual critical appraisal and uh, I will be honest, I plan to do a full critical appraisal like the one I did for the Dr. Onish's study, but uh, I'm not gonna do that because I have started reading this article, okay, I've read the whole article, but even based on the abstract of the article, when you look at the methods section of it, you can see how heavily flawed it is. So I don't think it's actually worth the full critical appraisal. We don't have to get into all the details. I'm going to discuss the major flaw of this study and why I think that this study should be taken with a grain of salt to say the least. First of all, let me tell you about this study, just to make sure that everybody who is watching this video understands what I'm talking about. As a side note, this study is available in public access. I will add the link to the study to the description. If you want to disagree with me or argue with me, or if you want to familiarize with this study, please go ahead, uh, be my guest to do so, and be my guest to actually reach out, make comments, make suggestions. I'm happy to discuss them. So here is the brief summary of this study. They have used Facebook ads to target a representative sample of the population of Santa Clara County. I assume that it's the area where their lab is located. And those who saw these ads were invited to come to the lab and to be tested for like, using specific tests for coronavirus, whether they are carriers or not, whether they have antibodies or not. Quite frankly, it doesn't really matter what kind of tests they used because all tests they have their own limitations and shortcomings, and there were lots of criticisms about the choice of the tests, their sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and so on. Quite frankly, I don't care about this at all, because the study is much more flawed on, on a different level. First of all, they used Facebook ads to target a certain subpopulation of Santa Clara County. That is a huge issue because not everybody has internet, not everybody has Facebook, and not everybody uses Facebook regularly. I know it might sound odd in 2020 because everybody who watches this video likely has internet, likely has access to Facebook, likely uses it, but if we take a good look at the population of any place in North America, in the world in general, there are people who do not use Facebook, there are people who are paranoid about Facebook, there are people who are cut off electricity, all the regular utilities that we have, there are people who do not have free access to internet, there are people in prisons, there are people in hospitals, there are people who are so busy with their day-to-day -day routines or work that they do not check their Facebook. So even this first step in their selection process already creates a sample that is not representative even of Santa Clara County, let alone the world or United States. Which brings us to the second step, which is even worse. These people volunteered to participate in this study. Usually we are trying to randomly select people, and this is 
one of the cases when the random selection should have been done. Instead, what happened is pretty much everybody likely who was feeling like they might be in a target group, in the risk group for coronavirus, had volunteered to participate in this study. Healthcare workers who were not tested, people who were in contact with somebody who had COVID-19, who were not tested, people who are feeling like under the weather or they are having some sort of a flu symptoms and they were not tested but they would like to be tested, people who are a bit paranoid or scared of this virus would also go there. Another reason for being tested is that, you know, sometimes people want to volunteer for the, for the best intentions because they want to contribute to science and this cohort of people tends to be the same cohort of people who would volunteer in a hospital or in a retirement home and accordingly they would be exposed to the virus there. So essentially the second step of selection process leads to creation of a sample that is comprised of people who are much more likely to test positive for COVID-19. And I'm not talking about people who are like 20-30% more likely. Likely we are talking about the order of magnitude kind of a difference. So we're talking about like 10 times more likely. And effectively that is reflected in the major findings of the study. The main message of the study is that the real prevalence of the coronavirus infection is 50 to 85 times higher than officially reported. Accordingly, if we recalculate the case fatality rate, it will be indeed at the same level as the regular flu. And I believe that there is a huge issue with this kind of reporting. They are reporting on the study that is so biased that they ended up having a sample that is not representative of anything. It's not representative of Santa Clara County, it's not representative of the United States population, it's not representative of the world to begin with. And they have selected, or I would rather say they have let the participants select themselves in such a way that the prevalence of coronavirus positive tests is much, much higher than the regular population. So by reporting this study the way they do, by going public with their findings without putting them into the proper context, they are continuing to spread misinformation, but if previously we have heard a lot of reports or we are relying on official data and uh, this data are flawed and biased in one way, now with this study they are doing absolutely the opposite. They are telling us that this virus is not worse than the regular flu, which is essentially not true and I hope that with this video I have shown to you how biased this study is. Once again I would like to say that I don't have any personal issues with Dr. Ioannidis or his research. I just found several serious flaws in his study and I feel that it's my duty to inform the people who are watching my channel and who are listening to me and care about my opinion. On top of that, I actually have to say that I truly enjoy watching Dr. Ioannidis' opinions, his interviews. I find them very interesting and I admire his intelligence and the way he presents the information. But with this one, in my opinion, he's very wrong. And I'm actually a little bit shocked that uh, Stanford Epidemiological Department would uh, design this kind of study and run this kind of study because it's like clearly flawed and it doesn't take a genius to see it. Uh, even I could see it. Plus, uh, they would endorse this kind of information, this kind of study, this kind of findings and make them public in such a sens sensationalistic way. I really don't appreciate it. And I believe that it, it is our job and our duty as healthcare professionals, as researchers, as people who have doctor title in front of their names to provide the people around us with uh, proper information not to spread misinformation, not to make any sensations, not to promote our agendas, no. We're here to tell people the truth or whatever we know about the truth in, in, in an unbiased and a proper way. Having said that, that was it for today. I hope it didn't sound like a rant. I will keep talking about the COVID-19 pandemic in my next videos. Of course, I will do my best to spend some time on diet and nutrition as this channel is designed to and uh, if you have any questions or suggestions please feel free to reach out to make comments hit the like button if you like my video subscribe if you don't want to miss anything 
out of my future videos and I will be working on them in the meanwhile. Stay strong, stay safe, stay healthy, stay home and I will see you in my next video. All the best.